What's up YouTubers, it's Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar, Practical Preppers. We've got a 9.24 kW 24 panel solar array here on a Sinclair Designs ground mount. And I just want to take you through and show you. And yes, I finally got a gimbal and I'm learning how to use it. So this solar array, it's on four posts. It's a single post mount. And I uh, had something go on with this panel. This panel was broken. So we're waiting on a replacement. We're going to go ahead and leave it there for now. There's one of our clamps if you want to close up on that. And this is the Sinclair Designs single post sky rack. These are 72 cell modules, the long ones, but you can also do this with 60 cell modules. I'm just going to take you on a walk around. You can see just how simple the Sinclair Designs ground mount is put together very quick very durable beefy steel show you that right there what we're dealing with a little mud on there it'll wash off these panels are 385 watt Axitec panels they're wired in series strings of seven there's some panel clips in case you want to see how we do our solar wire management I always try to keep our connectors underneath the drip lines and uh, these panels are in strings of seven there's four groups of seven and then they're paralleled and they go back to uh, the solar converter in two two parallel groups so these are our, our parallel connectors those are called Y connectors. And then here's our disconnect for our two solar strings. So you take those two solar strings that are both operating at around nine amps. You combine them, series them to seven panels and then you combine two strings. And then there they are going back. They're going all the way back to the house. And those are IMO disconnects we're using. High voltage DC disconnects. You can see where we've got our solar wire going in there through a weather head. So the guys are having a little lunch. We're just wrapping the job up, de debriefing, and uh, it's a nice farm. This is kind of the environment that we're most used to working on. We've got the machine loaded up, and I'm just going to walk the trench path with you guys and show you where we went from. A lot of time people are asking questions, how far can you go on a solar system? It's a nice garden there. Nice garden a homeowner has. So let's just take a look at the trench path. I think we we're around 200 feet coming in. And I can show you the voltages and the amperages and what the operating characteristics of this system are. But first I'll take you to where we bring our solar array wires into the house. So here we have our disconnect, our point of connection for the grid. You can't see it, but there's a 200 amp panel on the back side of this meter base. And we installed a critical load sub panel on the other side of this window. We moved all the circuits from the main panel to the critical load panel that we want to be backed up when the power is out. We fed a 50 amp circuit capable of back feeding 30 amps to the panel through this disconnect for the utility. And then underneath the house, in this beautiful crawl space, it goes all the way to the other side of the house where our solar mech room is. So I'll take you there now. So in here amongst these rustic settings, we have our Solar system with our two batteries. These are Fortress E-Flex 5.4s. Batteries are brand new batteries. These are the lithium ferrophosphate batteries from Fortress. They're paralleled. Each one of them is a 48 volt battery with about 105 amp hours in it. Down below, that's our transfer switch that we use as a bypass on every system in case something was to happen with the Solark. The customer would be able to bypass the Solark 
and instantly have grid power passing back through to all their loads. So these are lithium ferrophosphate batteries. So they've got a little over 200 amp hour or 10 kW of lithium. Cool thing about these batteries is when they're full, they're full. When they're empty, they're empty. You're not gonna hurt them by charging them and discharging them deep or charging them hard as long as you follow the manufacturer's specs. They hang up on the wall. They don't put any gases into the house. They have Wi-Fi monitoring. They have closed loop communication. So you can actually see, I'm gonna to try to show you these lights real quick. You can actually see the state of charge on the battery. There's also a button right there. You can turn the battery on and off. And then we also have RS-45 closed loop communication between the batteries, which are daisy chained together, and the inverter so it can see the battery. And this is kind of the holy grail of battery backup with lithium ion is having all, your whole system talk to each other. This is the solar converter. If you guys have not seen these yet or heard about these in previous videos, the Solar 12K. It's a great inverter. It's got uh, access to the breakers on the AC side and DC breakers. It's also got a uh, solar PV disconnect on the underside of the unit. So it's basically an all-in-one although we do install the transfer switch, which I showed you earlier. But this thing is awesome. It can take high voltage DC, 48 volt battery, and it takes the grid power. It's got tons of functionality. You can program this thing however you want, make it do a lot of different things. Um, I've got the, the customer off grid right now. We're just making sure that it's all working right, but you press that button and you got Buku's information. So I can look at the customer's load in this column right here. Look at what the solar's doing. And, uh, and then the, as far as programmability goes, I can come in here and I can actually, there's my BMS lithium battery. I can actually see my battery. And then if I hit the charge button, I can set my battery voltage for all my parameters, my charging parameters. And it's just really cool. Another, another cool thing is that we have a new window, Lithium Battery Info, can actually see what the battery is doing. So if you see that number two right there, those are my two E-flexes that have been paralleled. And I can see that they're full. And this is just kind of oscillating between 99 and 100%. And this customer is running off grid right now. If you see that, saw this, I don't know if you noticed, but I have the grid breaker off. I'm just running them just to make sure everything is gonna run the way we want it to and function right. So here's the old main panel. You can see we've got the back feed breaker snapped into the bottom of the breaker. Now bottom of the breaker panel. It's a 50 amp breaker because of pass through, but the max back feed is not gonna exceed the 120% rule. And then here's our critical loads sub panel. We've got our critical load sub panel all labeled up. This panel is supplied by solar, got the main feed marked out, and then we're sub-feeding a couple of different, a barn down here with some freezers in it, and then we're pretty much running everything in the house. So here's that critical load panel set up. Ideally, you would get your critical load panel right next to your main, but we just couldn't do it in this room. I know the lighting's bad, but ideally it would have been, went right, right there, but we weren't able to do that. I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar and I really appreciate you watching this video. I'm a solar installer and a licensed electrician in North Georgia. I work with Practical Preppers a lot and um, I just appreciate you watching this channel. Please like and subscribe and uh, keep following. We'll pump out more videos of system tours as well as uh, we'll give you tips on how to install. I try to do a little bit of both. And if you're interested in one of these systems, please don't feel free to contact me or Practical Preppers. Uh, you can get in touch with me, with me through this YouTube channel. And um, uh, you can also just Google Johnny Valentine Gain Solar Services. And uh, send me a text message, though, because my phone's just ringing all the time. Thanks for watching.